Coach Doran get started here, and I appreciate everybody being here. You bet. Well, I just want to thank everyone for jumping on and such notice. And uh, today's not about NC State football. It's about Ruff and Miguel joining our program and, and our, our excitement. Pleasure to have him um, a part of what we're doing here. It's been a long time that uh, he and I have known each other. I know that's been documented already. But, you know, when you've been coaching 20-plus years and, and you have somebody that you look up to, uh, in your tree and have for a long time, like rough um, for me, and then to be able to come to work every day and have him be a part of what we're doing, it's a blessing. And very thankful to him and Erlene for uh, being a part of what we're doing. And, you know, the way this all worked out, it's it's been a blessing, I think, for him too, to be able to come home and be around uh, his father and, and back in the state where I know he's very loved and been such positive um, responses already, you know, with him joining the Wolfpack. And I know his presence is going to be felt not just by our, our athletes, but by our staff and our university and our boosters and, and our fan base. So thank you, Ruffin, for being a part of it. And this is your show, man. want to let everybody hit you up on what's going on with you and look forward to getting you in here with me in person soon, buddy. Same here, Dave. Looking forward to it. Uh, just following Dave, just – Glad to be a part. Uh, Dave and I, like he's, he mentioned, has been well documented. Our relationship, our friendship began a long time ago, I think in California. And uh, as a, both of us meeting and Dave having to exchange film and go through packages with him, we kept in touch for years. And, uh, and Dave has always checked on me when things were difficult times and as friends and then we got a chance to coach see each other in competitive situations and but the friendship was way above the competitive situation in every instance and uh when i have a chance to come back and and be home dave the moment i mentioned that from oklahoma dave didn't call about a job he just called to make sure i was all right my dad was all right and uh that's just how it's been and um uh, uh, but now to work out where I have a chance to come in and be a part and, and uh, be any kind of assistant to Dave, the, the coaches, the, the people, the kids, the people in the program, all through the program, alumni, uh, and assist Dave in whatever means necessary. Uh, I'm, I'm honored and pleasure looking forward to it. All right, uh, Aaron Beard, I see that um, you have a question. Yeah. Hey, Ruff. Good to hey. see you back. <laughs> hey, Aaron. How you doing? Uh, long time. Um, you, you mentioned being home and you mentioned your family connection. I'm curious how much of you had said when you left Oklahoma that you weren't done with coaching necessarily. You know, that it wasn't like a retirement you were done. But I guess the opportunity to be back in your home state, your dad, your family connections, and be in an FBS conference or a Power Five conference in your home state, would this have been an opportunity? Like, would you have gone to another school, or was it kind of the right opportunity to come back to the state? Well, it, it was it was more the right opportunity with the right people. You know, that's always been a a, a threshold for me is is the program, but being being right people, being with Dave, is, like I mentioned, our friendship has been sincere. It's, it hasn't been anything but that, and to have a chance to have him in state is a double bonus. Uh, Dave understood why I was coming home uh, to check and be around, help my brother take care of my dad, and be a, be a, be able to be a son again that way. And he was, he and I shared experiences along that same line. So he understood exactly why I came home, Aaron, and what I was about, and then to be able to drive whatever thirty minutes and uh, have a chance to work uh, again for the people I work for and the person I work for. And, and with the uh, always and always have been in the forefront of any decision, so this was this worked out in perfect concert with me being back home in the state, able to see my dad, and then have a chance to work for Dave. Uh, Brett Friedlander. Hey, Ross, how you doing? Hey, Brett, how you doing? Okay, bro? man. Um, this question is for both you and if Coach Doran could also address it. Um, what exactly uh, is your role going to be, or has that been determined yet? What kind of duties that you'll have? They want they they lead off of that one. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be everything, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, for me, uh, when the season ended and 
going through you know the month thinking about ways to, to improve what I do, improve our program. Uh, it's always great as a head coach to have someone on your staff that has sat in your chair. And I had that availability when Ted Roof was on our staff. As you know, Ted was a head coach. Uh, it, and for me, I think every assistant, every person that works for me comes in and gives me ideas. Uh, none of them have had the, the stick that I've had. And so just timing was kind of perfect. Um, I talked to Jerry Kill, who had done this last season at Virginia Tech and is now doing it at TCU for Coach Patterson and asked him about it, talked to Justin about, you know, what it did for him. And to me, it was a no-brainer. And it was really just about finding the right person. Um, came up with the idea prior to Ruff, you know, being really out there and just had been going through it with our administration and Fred Demarest, uh, who you guys know had seen this happen at Florida on the basketball side with Billy Donovan and thought it was a great way for me to have somebody to, that I can go to um, pushing as a head coach a lot of times you don't get a coach there's a lot of things that pull you out of your chair and, and having somebody that knows how to deal with those things like rough and for me it's going to allow me to be more present when I want to be and and I just have really a, a sounding board I don't think you can list off the number of things that a head coach has to do um, but having the confidant that can stand next to you and be a part of those decisions and whether he agrees with me or doesn't, I know he's going to be honest with me and, and give me feedback that I can listen to, absorb, marinate on, and, and he will do that. I look forward to those conversations. Thanks. Uh, Brian Bailey. Are you muted, Brian? I'm, I'm good now, thank you. You got me? Yeah. Yes. All right. Coach Ruff, have you talked to Coach Dorn about how to put 70 on the Tar Heels yet? <laughs> no. We, we, <laughs> no, B, we, we, we just been talking about other, 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 other uh, ideas and whatever he needs from me. But, no, we haven't discussed uh, any strategic tech thoughts yet. How about how about an update on your dad? How's he doing? Yeah, doing better. Uh, I say better, but you know, talking through a glass, talking through a, a door, and uh, it's been great. But early enlightened me last time Brian was how happy he was to see us drive up. The nurses have been great. The quarantine is still there, uh, but to be able to you know drive what an hour, if that and and be at the rehabilitation center to see him has been a, been a blessing. And uh, that just correlates with the job. And Dave understood that. Like I mentioned before, Brian, Dave, it wasn't about the job. Dave just called when he heard everything about me coming back home about that, about how's my dad. And it's been that way the whole time. And, and uh, then, uh, then we began, as we got around and it, it, this next, uh, move for next 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 position came available and and uh but uh but my dad was great and then what helps helps that is dave understands and understood the exact reason why i was coming back to north carolina uh jared from rel coach ruff awesome to see you back uh this question's for coach doran I think you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that's almost as universally loved as, as Coach Ruffin is from the media to his former players, things like that. What does somebody with his character, his personality bring to your locker room? You know, uh, the guy's just, uh, every time I talk to him, I smile, you know, and I think that was the one thing. Um, for me is the power of positivity and surrounding myself with people that generate that in people. And I know Ruffin does that and, and there's nothing that's not genuine about him. And I think that's exactly what our staff needs. It's what our players need. I'm, I'm sure every team can say the same. He, he is, in my opinion, one of the most positive and he's also one of the most honest whether you want to hear it or not, he's going to tell you the truth. And, and I think those things are great for staff members, they're great for young people. And uh, so, you know, for me to have someone else that I know is going to 
help young people be the best versions of themselves that they can be and give himself to them. I know Ruff will do that. And, and that's what I want. You know, there wasn't any agenda that came along with this. It's just, you know, me trying to get a great human being uh, to be a part of our program and help us be better at what we do. And it's a win-win. Uh, JB Ricks. Hey guys, uh, thanks so much uh, for taking out time for us. Uh, Coach McNeil, welcome back to uh, North Carolina. This is thanks, JB. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a two-part question, uh, one part for Coach Dorn and the other part for you. Uh, it's basically just about recruiting. Coach Dorn, what do you think uh, Mc, uh, Coach McNeil can, can, can bring to uh, the recruiting aspect of your coaching staff? And obviously for you, Coach McNeil, what do you think you can bring um, to, to NC State when it comes to recruiting, especially your ties, you know, in this state from your days at ECU? Well, you know, I've always felt like recruiting is about relationships, and, and obviously that's a strength of Ruffs. And I know he's going to have thousands of relationships he's already got with high school coaches that are out there. But more than anything, I think when people are allowed to start visiting our campus again, that's one of the things I'm most proud of is, is the type of people that we have at NC State on our staff. And, and Ruff adds to that mix and allows – you know, uh, a mother, a father, a mentor, a recruit to sit down with a great human being that works for our university and talk about the advantages it brings. And for him being a native of the state and have worked at so many of the universities, not just here, but in the country, I think he just gives them a great point of reference to ask questions to. Uh, Jay, I agree with Dave. Um, you know, the fact that I'm from North Carolina, had a chance to work here, work throughout the state, you know, played high school, college football within the state, uh, having a chance to, to, to meet people when they come on campus, which will be the first time I'll have a chance not to go visit, but to be in place when they do come to, to be a reference. And, uh, you know, I think, Dave, and I, I mentioned how our relationship carries on. I think our philosophy of of taking care of young men and making sure they reach the highest possible goals and, and more uh, are both our goals, and that's what makes us unique. Also, you know, I've always felt, I know Dave does too, is uh, the, a parent's most proud possession is their, is, their, is their child. And again, able to help, able to help Dave and the staff and, and uh, young men come and see the real, real side, the truth, and that's what we're going to provide is the truth part of it. And uh, I'm looking forward to that challenge. I'm looking forward to that opportunity, really, uh, to be a part of it and, and uh, looking forward to attacking it. Thank you both. Thank you, JB. Uh, Andrew Schnicker. This could be a question for either of you. With um, the way things are going, um, Right now with the COVID pandemic and all the discussions around college football, I mean, my question would just be kind of how are either of you feeling about everything going forward with us getting close to what would normally – closer to what would normally be the start of fall camp and, and getting towards the season. Do you feel like it, things are in a good position for things to start normally? Do you feel like it's safe or do you feel like we're in a position where we might see things start to get pushed back? I think Dave would be good to – do that and I add on if necessary. You know, Andrew, this call is more about rough and joining the staff. Um, and to be honest, I'm not an expert on what's going to happen next with COVID-19. We're doing everything we can do to help these players and staff members be ready for whatever comes our way. But right now on the calendar, we play Louisville and that's what we're preparing to do until they tell me we're not. I don't see anybody else's hand, so if you can't put your hand up, but you uh, have a question, uh, Alyssa, do you have something? Yeah, Coach McNeil, just what are you most excited for? Come to the ACC and be in this conference. You've kind of been watching from afar, but to be part of it, a lot of rivalries going on. What are you most excited for? Well, you know, you're first, Alyssa, thank you for the question. Uh, thanks for being on. One thing is getting around our staff. I think if you've been around or know me pretty good is I believe in controllables and, and, and uncontrollables. And 
focus on the controllable things more than anything else, even avoid the uncontrollable, but more the controllables. And that's get to know our staff, get to know our players, um, how they feel, how they think. Again, assisting Dave, whatever he may need, or uh, be a, a sounding board. That chair, like Dave mentioned, I've sat in that chair before, listen, it's a three-legged stool. It's not four-legged. It rocks back and forth sort of awkwardly. And if you try to, ever try to sell a three-legged stool, <laughs> that, that's what it is. So I hope it'll be a balance, balance, balancing, uh, balancing leg for that stool for him. And then, uh, uh, you know, from, from that point on, then I think we, if everybody thinks that same way, which I know they do, uh, as far as staying focused on, on what's at hand, the controllables, how good can we get, uh, how well can we keep our team concept and team uh, development and, and stay focused on that. And I think that'll be some key facts that, and key factors uh, that will help me. Uh, Jonas Pope, you have something? Yes, this question is for uh, Coach McNeil. Um, I know you said when you guys, when you moved back to North Carolina, you were in constant conversation with Coach Doran, um, but it wasn't about football necessarily. But when he offered you this position, did it, was it something you had to think about or you jumped at it right away when he, uh, when he made the position available? Well, you know, it was when you're dealing with someone and you, been, and you have uh, conversations with, 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 with uh, uh, people you've known, friends, uh, dear friends, Jonas, and you know that, uh, the fact that we, the very first call was, one of my first call when I was coming home was from Dave. And uh, it's been that we had other situations that jobs I've left or what have you, he's always reached out to make sure. But this one was, was a personal one and, and something both of us, both of us could, could identify with and coming home. And when he offered it, it was something that we both felt was the right time, you know, he knew my main goal coming home was to be a to be a son again. I've been coaching for 39 years, 39 seasons, Jonas, and it's a long time. And and we talked about that and talked about other things. But the chance to when Dave offers a chance to work with a, a not just a friend but a dear friend and a, a person who we both have known each other. You know, a lot of times trust is not just one way. It's trust and there's verification of trust. I think Dave and I have verification of trust between each other, which is, is a whole different thing. So uh, that was that was major for us, Jones, major for me, and I know for Dave. Brett, you had a follow-up? Yes, Ruff, have you uh, taught Coach Doran any of your uh, Ruffisms or uh, and famous acronyms? Well, he knows I'm as country as a row of corn, so every time I talk to him, he's probably laughing at my accent. And, uh, you know, a lot of times our conversations, uh, Brett, were serious when he came to my dad and how Sarah and his family, Sarah and the family, kids were doing, and he knows Erlene and I, I, my family. But then it's always something funny. And most of the time it's me saying something with my <laughs> accent. And, uh, but no, he, he's probably heard a few of them, but I'm sure he'll get a chance to, uh, get a couple of them here pretty soon. <laughs> just, just make sure you don't microwave it. Yeah, he won't microwave it. No microwave. Uh, JB, you have a follow up. Yeah, this one's just for Coach, Coach for Coach McNeil. Uh, as far as you, now that you're joining the staff, is there a particular group? of uh, players or position, a position group that you're most looking forward to work with, uh, with your new role? Well, JB, another great question. First, it'll be to be there for Dave and the staff. And Dave knows that my next primary goal will be to get around those kids in the most, in the safest way possible. But JB, get, get around them quickly, the entire team. And uh, offensively, defensively, special teams wise, First team to fourth to fourth team doesn't matter, but to be around those kids in that in that type of uh, uh, position, to be an ear, uh, be a listening ear, uh, perhaps when 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 they want to hear experiences that possibly I've been through, uh, if needed, experiences to maybe help uh, 
uh, handle something outside of football, JB, just to make sure I'm a, 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 a sounding boy for the young, young youngsters as well. And uh, but my first duty would be there, be there for Coach Dorn and and uh, and help balance that three-legged stool out for him. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome, JB. Uh, anybody else have a question? Uh, Rod Baxley. Yeah, this can be for Coach McNeil and Coach Doran. I'm, I'm just wondering with you guys, uh, all of your shared experiences of those, is there any story that really sticks out in your mind when you think about the relationship you guys have? Dave, you want to go first? You know, uh, I don't know if there's one that I can tell that I would want you to write. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, most of the things we've done are things you would expect coaches have done. Uh, again, to me, it's just there's certain people you meet in this business, and Ruffin is one of those for me that uh, when I was a GA at Southern Cal, you're kind of a, the lowest men in the building, you know, and visiting staffs come and go, and some of them treat you like you're the lowest, some of them treat you like you're an up-and-coming coach. And uh, the whole staff at Fresno that, that Ruff was on, their defense came in and just treated me like gold. And uh, I've always tried to stay in touch with people that showed me that kind of respect when I probably didn't deserve it. And, and so I just – it really showed who he was. As I got into the Big 12, he was at Texas Tech and immediately saw him in recruiting and, and again, just smiled and talked about, you know, where I've come from, what I've done, and, you know, then watching him, you know, from afar at NIU, and then all of a sudden I'm competing against him while he's at, at ECU doing what he did there. Um, but I don't have a single story. I mean, it's really a collection of just what a great person he's been to me and, and somebody I've looked up to. And what a great day, you know, for me and for, for NC State football and for the university and the state to celebrate Brangen Ruffin. Uh, to be a part of this because uh, that's what it's about. You know, it's who you go to work with, who you go to battle with. The players, you know, those guys, you recruit them and you coach them and you love them. Um, but there's just so many really, really special memories you have with the people you work with. I'm sure you share those with your coworkers as well. And, and knowing that I have a sounding board and a confidant, a friend, and an established person uh, and husband, father, like Ruffin working with me, not for me, it's, it's a great day. Uh, really excited about what's happening here right now. I echo the same. Uh, too many years passed by. The stories uh, seem to be endless. My first, I go back and I, I'm sure that Dave had a lot of staffs come through and I remember it was down in the, not basement, but the room at Southern Cal was down. down. I said, I said, this I said, this this coach has been there with a lot of staffs. Because we're down and there's nobody, it's just us. And uh that first, but Dave didn't it, it didn't seem, you know, you meet you, you know that that was a part of his duties or one of his duties. But my first impression was, hey, it, he, he's a ball coach. He understands it and he started talking ball and and uh delivery. Uh, understood systems, schematic, but then he was sharing everything with it. So that would be the first one. And then, like Dave said, it's just a, it's a day that we get a chance to work with each other, and I consider it for uh, Dave and, 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 and be there for him, be for the staff, for the young people, and uh, do the best job I can and, and uh, make sure anything I can control, I can control it and uh, do it to the best of my ability. And, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, excited about the opportunity. Uh, Jonas, you had another question? Yes, this one's also for uh, Coach McNeil. I know since the announcement this morning, you probably got a lot of phone calls and texts, a lot of well wishes. Uh, is, there any, is there any one former player or former high school coach in the area who's reached out to you that, that stood out so far? Yeah, well, it, it's uh, – Dave and I talked about it. It, it, it might, it, it's going to be a busy day just to be, I knew that um, when, it, when it will be announced. But uh, I mean, players, I think that's what you get into it. And, and you know, 
my background, I can tell already, you know, there's players from past teams, uh, from teams I coached in the 90s to, to, the, to different teams, different states, uh, Texas Tech, all different teams have said nothing but positive uh, calls. I got about about 70 texts I got to return. I'll, I'll return. I'm going to return each one. And a bunch of phone calls. And they taught this old guy how to get on Twitter a little bit. So I'm trying to learn how to make sure I do a good job of messaging, messaging people back. And uh, But it, it's been a lot of excitement. Uh, the former players are excited. Uh, no matter where I've coached them, they're excited about opportunity. Because I don't think a lot of those guys, they, they thought I may have been out of football, retired. And like I, you know, as been in the media, you guys know, I did not retire, but they have opportunity to be home in state and uh, then a chance to work for uh, 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 not just a great football coach, but a great person and, and man and Dave and, and uh, get around uh, some kids and get around those kids and get a chance to to, to, to generate any kind of positive growth that I can upon them. All right, I don't see anybody else. Does anybody have anything? I know Coach Doran needed to run. Thank you guys for your time. I have another call here at 3.30, so I'm gonna jump off in case they have any more questions for Ruff. Thank you guys so much, and hopefully we'll see everybody in person here down the road. Thanks, Dave. Thank Thanks. you, All right, boss. I'll see you, Ruff. Okay, Dave. Um, Alyssa, you had another question? Just one more, Coach. What was your family's reaction when you told them the news? And I'm sure they're excited to get you closer to home and still get to be part of the sport you love. Well, Alyssa, you know, I, I, I don't know if you knew, I got all girls. So I'm like the only, I mean, my daughter has a cat. She's a girl. My granddaughter, I got all girls. So they, they want me to be happy. They know that I love coaching. Uh, I love being around the young people, and and, and I know they know I get a joy. And that's that's really what they care about. And now, Alyssa, being safe, staying safe, you know, during this pandemic, that was a concern. But knowing that we're happy, uh, we knew, Alyssa, we were going to live in this area. Well, of course, let me check that. Erlene made sure we live in this area four years ago. So the house we have, uh, it was already here, and uh, and uh, being in, being back, it just made it made it better because now we're home, and uh, every house we have, have we have rooms designated for the girls, so they have rooms here, pre-made already, and uh, but they were happy. My dad, uh, I think he'll be happy when I tell him. You know, I gotta yell it because he's behind a window. So we'll be yelling it, and, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting around him and letting him know, Alyssa. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Andrew, you had another one? Yes, I think, uh, <laughs> Coach, have you been part of the game day atmosphere at Carter Finley Stadium as a visiting coach? How excited are you to be part of it as a coach for the home side? Well, I, I know it's going to be an exciting venue. Uh, again, everyone's dealing, Andrew, with the pandemic that we have right now. Uh, uh, I know the excitement can, I think a lot of people be, be, be anxious to get out and support their team and, and support. Uh, but that's another avenue that I guess one of the uh, questions you have, but uh, I'm sure the excitement will be at a high level, and uh, I'm looking forward to that part. That's the part that you never never gets old for as the coaches going to the arena, going to the Coliseum, going to, going to the stadium. Uh, Joe from ABC 11, you have something? Yeah, hey coach Joe Mazur, ABC 11. Quick, quick question, just about uh, about your father. Is he in Lumberton? Yes, he's in Lumberton and uh, at a rehabilitation center there. Uh, and uh, so it makes it, this move was, this 
where we lived and the move was uh, really like a blessing because we can get to the 95 and I'm in Lumberton in no time and I, I can be there at the facility and uh, just a blink of the eye really, you know, so uh, again, it, it's, it's really been a blessing to be honest with you. I can't say it in any other kind of way. Uh, does anyone else have anything? Oh, Rod's got one more, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, Coach, just one more. Just wondering, uh, I know that there will be a lot of people in Robinson County happy to have you back here uh, coaching football. Who have you heard from uh, as far as that goes down there? Well, Sammy Batten, who I've known for a long time, growing up, going to school. Uh, and uh, I, I, some other classmates have, have called that live in the Raleigh area already. Uh, they haven't mentioned tickets yet, but I'm sure that'll be something <laughs> something else. But um, uh, Sammy was one of the first that I've heard from. And, uh, you know, getting a chance to, you know, be around my dad, letting him know that it will be a great moment. I'm really anxious to do that. And, but a lot of my former high school classmates and even some of my former players, not necessarily from Robinson County, but living in the Raleigh area have touched base. Uh, 